Hi, this is Cameron here with the Acaro Cutter Bender Combined Machine. Um, you can see that we've got the there's the 20 amp power cable there. And that gets plugged into this um, wall mounted socket. The foot pedal plugs in the top here. Okay. Um, inside the base of the machine, we open this door. There's the isolator switch for the machine. So at the moment it's on, that's off, that's on. So leave that switched on. There's a reset button here that you need to press when you start the machine. If uh, for any reason you push the emergency stop buttons, you need to come behind here and push that reset button there. Okay, first thing to do is check the rotation of the machine. So you've got to make sure that the table is rotating in the right direction. So we've got it set there to clockwise. So the first thing we do is close the, the guard on the machine. There's a switch there that disactivates the machine uh, for safety. So push your foot on the foot pedal. Make sure there's nothing on the table. Um, it's going to collide with anything, the bushes. Close the, close the uh, guard, press the foot pedal. And as you can see, it's actually rotating anti-clockwise. So the machine's rotating in the right direction. So what we're going to do is uh, change the phasing on the plug. So we'll have to pull the connector apart to do that. So you can change the, the phasing here. So isolate the power and then change the connections or the phasing on the, on the Okay, so we're gonna go around now. Machine's been plugged back in and turned on. So re push the reset button. This button here is to re return to zero. So if you stop the machine and it's not at its uh, home or reference position, you, you can push this button here. Just push that button there. You'll see the turntable will rotate and reference back to its position. Okay. So the machine's set to, to rotate in a clockwise rotation. We'll just check it now to make sure that it is rotating clockwise. Foot pedal. Okay. Okay, so it is, it's working fine. Okay. So at the moment there's no tooling in the machine. You see there's a, the squaring arm here, which I've flipped away. Okay. And then there's different size bushes that you can use. So depending on what radius you want. There's the center bush that I put in there. That pin's removable. So you just drop that in. There's a little recess or counter ball on that center bush. So, and uh, then you can select the outer bush. The rebar will come in from this direction. You adjust the, the positioning there. So you can fit the rebar in the machine. If you look over the top, you see the rebar will come through here and then it will bend around the bush there. The angle is determined by where this pin is placed in these holes around the circumference of the bending table. So the machine will rotate until the pin hits a limit switch here and then it will return back to the home position. So moving the pin into that position. If you want to bend less, move it closer to the limit switch or further. That way. So what we've got to be aware of is obviously the table can rotate 360 degrees. Without the pin, the, the table will rotate and it can collide into this arm. So always make sure you've got the pin in or you've got the arm flip back like that. So if I take the pin out now, table just keep rotating. Okay. 
So say if you stop in the wrong position, like that, and you want to go back to the home position, there's a button on the back here called reset, press the button and the machine will go back to the home position. So when you're setting up to bend the bar, make sure the machine set its home position, drop your bar in and adjust the squaring arm here. So you want it to be reasonably square when there's pressure on the bar so the deflection um, doesn't make the bar go out of square when you're bending. So I've selected an angle here just to test it. So you can, you can underbend it first so it's less than 90 just to see where the machine's going to bend to. Okay. As you can see, it's underbent now. So you can move the machine, the pin a bit further back. Still underbent. Here's a mark that I put here earlier. That should be 90 degrees. There you go, 90, 90 degree bend. So when you, every time you bend now with that size bar on this setup, you should always get the same. Okay, so they're both roughly 90. I've removed the two bushes, so the center bush and the outside bush. So the radius will be tighter. And I've moved this pin from here to there. So, So basically now what I'm going to do is bend 180. So I've got the pin located here. So you could start off just to test it. See, uh, drop the pin in. And just see how far we bend around. Okay, it's not far enough. So you can increase that a little bit. Still not enough. So once you get it right, you can put a little mark there just to that you know that that's where 180 is for that size bar. Okay, that's a little bit over, that's fine. So next, we'll do the same to the other side. Rotate it around, line up the mark. Move the pin to the 90 location. I put a mark there as well. So that's a bit under. So I've got to allow it to travel further. Pretty well 90. So I'll mark that location as well. Remove that old mark. So then I should get 90 every time. Okay, mark this bar. There you go. Okay, this is how the bar cutter operates. I'm just going to cut one bar this time at a time. You can cut multiple bars, four or so at the time, depending on, on the diameter of the bar. So I've marked some pieces 500 mil long. 
So you can lay them all out on the bench and mark them out. It's probably easier to do it that way. Okay, now the, there's a safety guard on the bar cutter here. So the machine will not operate when, when the guard's open. So you need to put the bar inside the machine, light up the mark, adjust the um, stop here so the bar can't deflect too far. Otherwise the bar will, will twist around and move around a lot. I close the guard, then push the reset button on the back of the machine. And then you can start cutting. So you can see down inside, it could be handy to have a, have a light or something here. But you can see down inside where the blades are, through the guard here.